Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of what I'm going to call Tank Media Games Reading Club. Um, because we're going to be playing, reading, Choice of Magics, a choice of game choice of games game or a choice of game um i did a couple of these in the past and i enjoyed doing them um and people seem to like them maybe because because other people weren't making these or whatever um but <clears throat> it's interesting i like reading i like these choice of stories these um uh what are they called uh interactive novels so welcome to choice of magics i was recommended this via twitter um I don't remember the username of the person who recommended it, but I'll try to remember for next time. Um, but welcome. My name's Keith, and I will be your lens, your your mouthpiece for this journey. Um, so welcome. Let's see. We can we'll check our stats and oh goodness. Okay, so we can check our stats later. Let's go ahead and get started and get reading. See what's happening. So we got a little uh, stuffed monkey here with a dragon. I uh, do not know the context, but we will figure it out. Uh, also, this I don't think this will be a daily series. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want me to keep going, and I will. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Let's let's do this thing. Chapter one: The Lost Academy. You push yourself out of the window of an ancient classroom, clutching a musty tome of vivant sea magic, and land with a roll on the cobblestone path below. Above you it seems to be night, and you're momentarily confused. How are you seeing stars, when stars have been obscured by clouds for over two thousand years? But then you realize the twinkling lights must be flecks of quartz in the rocky ceiling above, reflecting the light of the magical street lamps below. Those street lamps continued to shine even when the neighbor's magic pulled the, this academy underground. They shone underground while above ground. They shone underground while above ground. Abraxas walked the earth. Okay, gotcha. They shone underground while above ground. Abraxas walked the earth and declared that magic was forbidden. They illuminated this ancient place of learning while everywhere else wizards were put to the sword. You can still believe your luck. You still can't believe your luck in finding this academy before the church did. When you and Tal began following her bounty, a great burrowing worm, you had no idea it would burrow all the way to the sunken academy and its long buried treasures. Tal slew the worm, and its final thrash has collapsed the tunnel behind you. But apparently, not before an inquisitor followed you inside as well. He must have been shadowing you until you got your hands on this tome of magic, whereupon he shouted that you were under arrest, and here you are, more or less. You have no idea how the Inquisitor found you in the first place. Sometimes the church has an uncanny knack for knowing things. You're not a wizard yet, but you're not sure the Inquisitor cares about this technicality. He probably wants you dead. Tal prepares to jump from the same second floor window you did. Her fingers move to her eye patch, as if she's worried she will misjudge the distance. She hesitates a moment too long, and the Inquisitor's crossbow bolt lodges itself in her leg. Tal grunts in pain, leaps forward with her good leg, and lands ungracefully, faltering because of the wound. Also, eye patches, A1. You can't go wrong with an eye patch, no matter who's wearing it. Are you all right? You ask her. Meh. Gritting her teeth, Tal jerks the bull out from between the pieces of her black leather armor, ignoring the trickle of blood that results. I'm fine, but I <clears throat> might have a little trouble climbing up to that open window over there, which is too bad because it seems like our best escape route. She nods to the tome in your hands. Anything in there that can help? I'm certain of it, you say eagerly. You open up the Propheta Vivimentia, or Introduction to Vivimentsi, the tome that you managed to peruse a bit before the Inquisitor showed up. You recall the warning in the book's preface. The magic of life may have unintended consequences. Well, isn't that true of everything in life? Heal Tal's leg so we can keep running to the ancient dueling ground ahead where we can make our stand, sprout wings and carry Tal to a high dorm window where something's glittering, Part the wooden wall of the building next to us, dash inside, and reseal the wall. Okay, so this is a book about vivamancy. I feel like it may not have these spells in it about the uh, the, dorm, the wings or the parting the wooden wall. So healing the leg seems to be the obvious choice here, but I worry that the obvious choice is going to be a problem. Um, I don't know. These other two ones are very cool. Um, 
But maybe these all these spells are in there. I kind of like parting the wooden wall. I think that's really cool. Let's try that. Let's part. Let's try to part the wall. You point toward the academy wall and chant words from your book, Hebrario Oxano Phytosindo. You feel a connection with the wood, and a bright light wriggling with the tiny motes connects your hands to the wall, gained vivimancy. In the future, do you want to know when your skills change, as with this mention of gaining vivimancy? Uh, sure, yeah, show me the changes. With a great cracking sound, the wooden wall parts, revealing a classroom. Empty desks face a podium in front of a blackboard where some kind of lesson about clouds and lightning has been illustrated. Can you make it inside? You ask Tal. Sure, Tal hobbles into the classroom with you, dodging left and right to avoid bolts from the Inquisitor's crossbow. Phyto Crescott! You seal the wall behind you, leading, keeping out the Inquisitor. You hear a thunk as a final bolt hits the wall outside. Interesting, Tal says, eyeing the wall. Why that spell in particular? You know how the ancients' magic backfires. Better the academy destroyed than us. I want to shape great buildings like the ancients did. You've got to start somewhere. I've always wanted to set foot in a classroom. Eh, that's not what I would say. None of these are what I want to say, but I just thought that was really cool. Um, I don't want to lie, but I don't really care about the other one, so we'll just joke around with her, I guess. You know how the agent's magic backfires. Better the academy be destroyed than us. Tal raises an eyebrow. I thought you loved the idea of learning to cast spells. Sure, but I'm realistic about it, you say. It always came with the price for the ancients, but best not to rack up debts too quickly. Of course, increased caution. Tal nods good. Keep that pessimism. I might save your life someday. You take a, a look around the classroom. On the blackboard is an illustration of how automation magic works. Arrows are drawn from the eternal storm down to a stick figure mage, then from the mage to a blocky stick figure golem. From there, wavy lines radiate back to the eternal storm, which gets more scribbly where the lines reach it. You study the details of the di diagram in case it might be useful for learning automation spells later. We gained automation. Cool. There's just one skeleton in the room, crumpled behind the lecturer's podium, wearing gray robes and a conical hat. The skull under the hat is broken due to some ancient trauma. Ouch. You eye the conical hat. It's probably magical, but you aren't certain how it would look with the rest of your attire. What do you look like? Bookish and spectacle, rugged and adventurous, a snappy dresser popular about town. I dress all in black. I'd like to look rugged and adventurous, to be honest with you. I mean, who wouldn't? I, don't f I feel like maybe that's too mainstream an answer. What do you guys think? I know you can't answer me, but you let me know. If you th if you think I should really change some of these decisions, maybe I'll start over and I'll do a different do for a different way. But I don't think that's that's going to be the case. Actually, I think we're let's be rugged and adventurous. Let's not be your typical magic man. I like rugged and adventurous. You and Tal have been hiking together and fighting the monsters of the countryside since you were young. Gained fighting. Your arms are well muscled and your mud spattered leather armor has but seen better days. Gained fighting. Uh, what else is remarkable about your appearance? I've been told I'm quite good looking, my beard is enormous, my head is shaved, and my scalp has some intimidating tattoos. I almost never cut my hair, it comes down to my ankles. <laughs> That's funny. Let's do beard. I don't care about being good looking, but I do want a great beard. Because mine isn't the best. Let's check these stats. Fighting. Okay, automation, vivimancy. Three. We're decent at fighting. Cool. We, I need to remember these things. I need to remember... Really need to remember these things. Um, because... Uh, I need to make decisions based on my stats. Uh, what else is remarkable about my appearance? Beard is enormous. You look like a her oh man, I didn't want to be that that much of a bear. I wanted to be well kept. Um, you look like a hermit with a scraggly beard that comes down to your collarbone. Your beard is constantly collecting crumbs and knots. You had thought it was merely a com cosmetic decision or lack of one until you felt power coursing through your beard with your vivimancy spill. Now you think it might serve as an extra reservoir of living power. Perhaps that wa that's why so many of the wizards of old sported great beards or long hair gained vivimancy. That's cool. And what sort of pronouns and nouns do you prefer? Why the royal titles? Oh, no reason. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I prefer he. 
I am a, I identify as a man. Um, he, him, his, man, king. Okay, don't want to make any mistakes there, just in case. And you experimentally try on the ancient professor's conical hat. You do feel a certain attunement with all things mental, but you also feel a little silly. You take it off again. You're really going to wear that, Tal asks? This criticism strikes you as a little funny coming from Tal. Her hair turns silvery gray at a young age, as she, and she refused to dye it. She keeps it in a short ponytail, probably lopping it off with a sword when it gets too long. Her pronounced cheekbones have a few scars from fights with monsters, but she has never applied any cosmetics to conceal them. You're not even certain a dress has ever graced her wiry frame. You know that Tal could put more effort into her appearance, but you're also fairly sure she doesn't give a damn. Maybe Tao figures her appearance is a lost cause since she has to wear an eye patch. You think she'd be wrong about that, but you two don't talk about it. Don't judge me, you tell Tao cheerfully. You're no one to judge fashion sense. Tao sticks her tongue out at you. Do you want to wear the conical hat from now on? Um, Let's try it on again and see if she'll give it another chance. Come on, give it a chance. You put on the conical hat again. Gained divination, gained ancient history. Tal snorts and laughs into her bracer. You take off the conical hat. Tal continues to have to have little aftershock giggles. How much did Tal's opinion of your appearance matter to you? Though I'm open to romance with anyone, Tal and I aren't romantic. I like women in general, but Tal and I aren't romantic a little. She's had better luck with guys than I have, so she must be doing something right. A little, but not much. I don't date and have nothing to gain by preening. I don't ever want to have sex, but I might want to go on dates. Hmm. We'll say we like women in general, but Tal and I aren't romantic. There's no romantic option. Um, there's no... Uh, I don't know what I was trying to say. There's Yeah, there's no we are together option. But let's, we'll like limit women in general. You like women generally, but Tal is just a good friend. You search the professor's pockets for more treasures and find a book. Your excitement diminishes somewhat when you realize it's not a book of magic. Its title is Via Verit Abraxas, uh, or True Life of Abraxas. It's written in a very scholarly style that makes it the most difficult thing you have tried to read in the ancient tongue. You try flipping through some of the passages looking for something understandable about magic and find this passage near the beginning. Abraxas is the most powerful wizard who ever lived. Excuse me. And we would do well to understand his life. It starts probably with glamour magic. Philautia omnis, cleos venenum. Simple words, but Abraxas understood they could be used with different effect on different people. Those who are used to following orders will fall under the glamour spell more readily. We gained glamour. What are you reading, Tal says. Strange book, very hard to read, you say. It claims Abraxas was a powerful wizard. That's an interesting term for a god, Tal says skeptically. You sure you want to bring that heretical stuff home with us? I think so, you say. I already learned the words to a glamour spell from it. Glamour? It makes you seem impressive and you can influence people easily, but then you get sick from rot afterwards, you say. It says Abraxas was a master of glamour magic. Do gods get sick from rot? Tal says dubious. Whatever, Tal. I'm keeping it. You inspect the room for for other things to take. A student has scratched Nihilo into a desk, but you're not certain it means anything besides destroy, a fairly unsurprising set sentiment in the classroom. No other students appear to have died here. Perhaps they revolted against their professor and left. Just then, the wall snaps open again where you had shut it minutes before. The Inquisitor, who had made it perhaps a hundred feet away in his search for another entrance, now comes hurrying back, kneels on the grass outside the classroom, and aims his crossbow at you again. You have a variety of incantations you could try, though you're now getting them a little mixed up. Oh no. We used this, I thought. I think that was the close the door thing. Do we want it? Do we want it out of this? Do we want to kill people? I don't know, man. I'm scared. I, I don't know. I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want us to turn evil or anything by killing someone. I think this. I think this is going to shut the wall. Philetta omnis cleos venenum. The first time you chant the words, they seem to do nothing but create a kind of sympathetic upwelling of energy within you. You repeat them and draw further on that energy. Oh, it's glamour. That was the. We just read that, I guess. You repeat them and draw further on that energy, and then the room is filled with a cloying sweet smell, and a su subtle golden aura appears around you. 
The Inquisitor ceases to fire his crossbow. Come here, you say, and he does. The Inquisitor seems unable to look away from you. Beneath his handlebar mustache, his mouth parts and all. Please don't try to harm us, you tell him, and he nods slightly. We gain glamour again. You spare a glance for Tal. Though she had drawn her sword, she had she warily sheathed it now. I am so sorry to intrude, says the Inquisitor, if there is anything I can do to make it up to you. Were you sent specifically to catch us, you asked the Inquisitor, and did you know about this place? The Inquisitor shakes his head. The Hierophant, the Hierophant, or however you want to, we want to say that, I had a vision of you exploring this place and thought it was the beginning of something important. Nobody knew who you were. I was just told to try to uncover this old academy or wait for you to show up, whichever came first. I was digging for a month with no progress on the other side of the ridge until you showed up chasing that tunneling worm, so I appreciate the relief. He, he is, his looks grow darker, but magic is forbidden. If the Hierophant knew you were a wizard, she'd have ordered your capture like anybody else. When Inquisitors capture magic users or shapeshifters, those people are typically never heard from again. Most people assume they are quietly executed. Most people assume they're quietly executed. The church's official line is that they will administer justice as is their duty to the kingdom, and the laws on the books certainly dictate death for wizards and shapeshifters. Hierophant Elizabeth is known to be quite the quite by the book. If anything you've heard about her is true, you would doubt she would make any kind of exception for you just because of an intriguing vision, but you decide to ask the Inquisitor's opinion. If you did capture me, would I be executed? You ask. Inquisitors just deliver the wizards, the Inquisitor says, but I think so. He doesn't know. Interesting. Well, I have new instructions for you, you say. Have him explore ahead and fight any monsters he encounters. Have him leave and never report what he's seen. Take his stuff, tie him up, come back for him later. Have him sit still so I can practice turning people into tortoises. <laughs> it's funny. I want him to leave. I don't want to deal with him. Uh, have him leave and never report what he's seen here. You have stumbled upon a very important secret mission, you tell the Inquisitor. You must leave this place and never report it to anyone, not even the Hierophant. Oh, says the Inquisitor, bowing low in obeisance. So very sorry. I shall leave post-haste. He hurries off in the direction he came. Are you sure he's not going to report us, Tal asks? You shrug. No, but the other options just seem cruel. Increased empathy. You do worry that you may see more Inquisitors when you return to Akraton, but you suppose you'll deal with that problem when you're above ground. Just then, another hole opens in the wall besides where we first appeared, looking out on the dark courtyard. Tal's brow furrows. What's happening? It must be a side effect of the vi of the vivomancy, you say. I've convinced the wood to part once. Maybe it's decided it likes the feel of that. This is the unexpected consequence? I suppose so. Will it stop? Tal asks, looking around. I'm worried about how many holes this academy can support. I don't know, you say. Tal shrugs. Well then, want to see if there's any more interesting holes? Want to see if any more interesting holes have opened up great idea you say you go outside and scan the courtyard for any in other interesting holes it appears one has opened up leading into what looks like a giant library unable to resist that temptation you head to the library next your hometown of Akradon has no library in fact you don't think there is a public library in the whole kingdom of Irenia when you were young, the word library had a similar feel to the words hoard or utopia. A cache, of, a cache of books free for the taking was too good to be true. Now you are in a library, and it is wonderful. The rows of books may well contain all the knowledge you have ever craved. The musty smell of the old books is intoxicating, and these are not just any books. Browsing the titles, it is clear these are tomes of magic, delicious, forbidden knowledge, ripe for the learning. The books glow slightly purple. You suspect this is an enchantment of negation that zaps dust and fungus before it can accrue. That's cool. Thanks, mother, you whisper. Your mother in insisted on teaching you the language of the ancients herself when you were young, as her mother taught her, even though the family had never been nobility. You sh you're not sure your mother would approve of the subject matter here, but you're grateful nonetheless. Looks like your lucky day, Tal mur murmurs, admiring the rows upon rows of books. Yours too, if you want, you say. None of you are suggesting learning magic, Tal says. You're way braver than I am when it comes to messing with that stuff. Mind if I take some books that just look expensive and mostly not cursed? <laughs> sure, you say. Although you know whichever book she picks, it will pain you to find that she has sold them. You hunt for primers in the schools of magic you don't have books for yet. Negation, glamour, divination, and automation. The hemispherical magical lights above you are dimmed by dust and long dead bugs, making it somewhat difficult to read the titles. Hey, why is there a humor section in the middle of the other magic? Tal calls out from a different, uh, different aisle. Is that a joke? 
I remember hearing somewhere that the ancients consider it a, considered it a kind of magic you call back. Don't remember why. Aspirationally, you also pick up a book called Megali Magia, Great Magic. The contents are unintelligible besides the introduction, which promises a cutting-edge look at how to perform incredibly powerful magic. The rest of the book may be too esoteric for you now, but you hope to unlock its secrets with time. You could spend hours in the library, you think, and why not? For all you know, there is only one Inquisitor pursuing you, but then again, for all you know, more Inquisitors are even now dousing the Academy's wooden buildings with oil and striking a spark. There's no reason the Hero Fan could not have sent other, another Inquisitor, or two, or three. You'd best not linger over much. As you peruse the books, you notice that an author's name is often more prominent than the bland title of what they wrote. You wonder whether your name will survive 2,000 years, and what you would... Per what you what you would be known for if it did what is your first name names that are longer than three letters are seen as little a little pretentious in your hometown of Akraton, though the urban elites of edra don't see it that way mm. we're going to do a little call back to ori in the blind forest and ori in the will of the wisp coming out i really enjoyed ori in the blind forest so we're going to do ori our first name will be Ori. And what's your father's name? In your society, before you register for a profession, if you were the son of Lon, you were called Lonson. Lonson. Hmm. What was my father's name? We'll do Del Son. I like Del. Del's cool. My father's name was Del. So I am Ori Delson. Ori Delson, you suppose it will never appear on the back of a book because you'll choose a professional name before then. Wizard Ori? Magician Ori? At the moment, it all sounds unusual and awkward, and you're not even sure Mayor Koss would allow it. You think they'll tell our tale in some musty book like this one day? You call out the Tal, who is exploring a different isle. I don't know. What's the tale? Shouts back. How Oriental saved the kingdom of Irenia, how Oriental brought back magic brought magic back to the kingdom of Irenia, how Oriental started a revolution and took over the kingdom. Let's bring magic back. How Oriental brought magic back to the kingdom of Irenia. Yeah, so everybody's gonna start using magic now, Tal calls out. How's the queen feel about that? Oh, Queen Thecla would make a great sorceress, you say. She's already kind of mysterious and reclusive. Very intelligent. Full of plots. I think she'd really like it. Increased optimism. And the Hierophant? And the Hierophant? She's pretty old. Maybe. On le maybe on learning the Queen has become a sorceress, Hierophant Elizabeth falls over dead with shock. And the rest of the church? Can we focus on the things everybody else could do with magic, you say? Tal pokes the, he pokes the head of Noodles, her purple stuffed monkey around the corner of a bookshelf. Could I learn bananamancy? Tal says in her noodles voice. What's never... Never mind, silly question. Of course, you say. Excellent. For my first trick, I shall make whatever bananas you own disappear. Tal often keeps you from ta ta taking yourself too seriously, and it's a, that's a good thing. Increased humor. Alright, so there's a stuffed, uh, a stuffed monkey in this book. I'm a big fan. As you're looking for books, your glamour finally wears off and you feel a bit sick to your stomach. This is the rot that famously destroys your health if you use glamour magic too much. You suppose every magic has its drawbacks. After a bit of hunting, you find introductory texts for negation and glamour. Ooh, excuse me. Divination and automation. That makes a total of six thick books, one for each school, plus the tome of advanced magic called Megali Magia. You can barely carry them all. You suppose you'll have to come back with a mule or something. You hesitate to bring back a book on negation magic. Some superstitious folk in town believe that the dark sun is not merely a physical entity beneath, entity beneath the surface of the earth, but rather an evil force that threatens to corrupt everyone it comes in contact with. You know the ancients didn't see it that way. The ancients even used the dark sun at the heart of the earth as a power source for their factories. You resolve to be circumspect about your own use of magic. 
While Tal is busy searching for books that look expensive, you can't wait to try some of this new magic. Divination sounds promising. You recall the main drawback of divination is that it reveals some of your own information to whomever you scry upon. If you scry on a thing that a thing instead, someone associated with the thing will learn something about you. Perhaps the thing's guardian or its creator or someone very interested in possessing it. What would you like to find out with divination? Hmm. If I think about what we want to avoid, that what we would want to avoid is going to be is going to know about me. The most valuable object, uh, someone else might want it. So let's think. Is there a potential ally here? Let's let's think about an ally. You decide to cast a spell to look for potential allies, monsters or golems that might befriend you. Increased caution. You place your left thumb and forefinger on your temples and hold up your right hand with fingers splayed, willing your senses to expand. You intone, Mysterion Gnomali Amicus Gnosia Exanthus. Exanthus. Before your eyes appears the vision of an ancient stone golem adjusting some levers on an old contraption in what looks to be some sort of service tunnel. The stone golem itself is a blocky creature, but it wears an, a, it wears a tattered tabard emblazoned with the crest of the Magic Academy, an open book surrounded by a tree, an eye, a black sun, a gear, and a crown. On the wall beside the golem is some kind of map, but you can't make it out clearly. The golem looks up, startled. It turns to look directly at you. Then the vision fades. You think... This is the drawback of, the, of divination in action. You have divined the location of a golem, but it's all, it has also divined yours. We gained divination. Tal, I think I found a potential ally, but I suspect it doesn't know it wants to be our friend yet, you say. Are you done? Sure, Tal says, returning to you with a backpack that is now bulging with heavy books. So you return to the section on automation magic and pick up a readable looking tome on golem commands and protocols. We gained automation. Then you head for the exit to the library, a set of double doors that each bar that bear the same set of symbols you saw on the golem's livery. You and Tal emerge from the library's main entrance into another quadrangle with false stars twinkling above. Where the last quadrangle appeared to be residential, this one seems administrative, with colonnades and porticos in the classical style. The tall wooden buildings were shaped by vivamancy and painted to resemble marble. Fancy in taste, cheap in budget. You've heard the university in the capital is the same way. So why don't you just cast all the divinations you want, Tal asks. It's just mentally exhausting, you say. Casting one leaves you unable to concentrate on the next. You need time to recover. And then, of course, there's the fact that it tends to give someone else information about you in return. I suppose there are plenty of things I'd rather not know, Tal says. You flinch a little at that. In fact, there's one secret that you've always kept from Tal that would make you afraid of ever casting divination on her, that lest she learn that secret from you. What is it? It was my fault Tal lost her eye. It was my fault Tal lost her father. I reported Tal to Mayor Cost. Let's do lost her eye. <laughs> uh, these other two sound horrible. I don't want. I don't want to be the reason her dad's dead, and I don't want to rat her out for anything. We're buddies, so it's my fault that she lost her eye. You were working as a runner for the local hunters, including Tal, letting, know, letting them know when monsters were spotted in the area. But when you were supposed to report a manticore to Tal, you happened upon some ruins of the ancients along the way. You thought you didn't tarry long, but it was just long enough that you reached Tal just as the manticore slashed her across the face. Facing two of you, the, best, the beast then flew off. Tal has worn an eye patch ever since then. It taught you a lasting lesson in caution. Increased caution. But by knowing Tao so long, you have also learned her own secret. Because you have caught her peeking with the eye that shouldn't be there. She doesn't know you know. She didn't see you saw. But you don't think you imagined it. So she does have an eye under there. There's no way Tao's injury could have healed if she were a normal human. But Tao is not a normal human shifter. Our, our race rev reviled ever since the Great War with the neighbors. When they, were in, when they were engineered by the neighbors to be assassins. That must be how she re regenerated her eye. You've hesitated to bring it up with her because you're not certain that what would happen to your friendship shapeshifters are captured and never seen again if tau thought you couldn't be trusted with the secret she would probably disappear forever oh we can be trusted don't worry you bring yourself back to the present where Tal is ruminating on the on the downsides of magic. It's all like that fairy tale where the greedy guy wishes for money and ends up, and ends up drowning in gold, Tal says. You sure you want to become a wizard? With all my heart, you say earnestly. Yeah, take your time thinking about it, Tal says, giving you a playful shove. Indeed, you've always been in love with the very idea of magic. You even formed vague plans about what you would do if you ever discovered it. What did you imagine you would do with your magical power? 
I wanted to be able to vanquish anyone I so chose. I wanted to clean the world of the fallout of the, the ancients left behind. I wanted to understand the world and how it got this way. I wanted to understand people better. Every life is a fascinating story. I imagined becoming well respected, even adored. I wanted to be a peacemaker and get people to lay down their arms. I wanted to bring back the fabulous inventions of the ancients. I imagined healing the sky, causing our weather to go back to normal. I just wanted to be free to pursue whatever whim struck me. I wanted to be a wandering healer like a saint. Hmm. It's a lot of stuff. What do I want to do? Hmm. God, there's so many options. It's hard, hard to choose the options. This book's very good so far. I didn't mention the, the, the author, but it's Kevin Gold, apparently. Kevin Gold has done a good job so far. I'm enjoying myself. Um, I really don't know, man. I think Peacemaker might be a good one. Well respected sounds kind of fun too, but that seems odd in this world where magic people get killed. I don't know, but I think vanquishing anyone I choose would be really cool too. This guy also seems like he wants to be free to pursue whims. So I feel like it's a cop out, but I want to be able to be free to pursue whatever whim struck me. Yeah, let's do whims. Let me know if you don't like that one. Seems like a cop-out, but I'll try it. You've never been one for grand plans. You prefer to take advantage of opportunities as you see them and let life wind along its meandering course. Of all the ancient mages, the vivamancers seem most aligned with your philosophy. Their let's just see what happens attitude is partly responsible for all the fabulous creatures roaming the countryside. You saw each modern monster as a living testament to some ancient's creative genius and whimsy. So we gain vivamancy, increase humor, and we increase our optimism. All right, cool. We're getting pretty good at these the magics. Um, humor is good. Empathy is good. Very cool. I really like. There's a whole lot of stuff going on right now. And oh, apparently a recap thing. Cool. Awesome. Okay, folks. I think we're gonna cut it cut it here at 30 minutes of of reading. Um, like I said, this may not be a daily thing, but if you enjoyed this so far, please be sure to let me know in the comments. Let me know you enjoy it and you want it, you want to see another one. You want you want me to keep going with this story. Um, I enjoy reading it. I'm definitely enjoying the story so far. I enjoy the the whole magic thing. It reminds me a little bit of our Dungeons and Dragons campaign, uh, Dungeon Boys. We have a Dungeons and Dragons show that comes out every week, Tuesdays uh, at 10 a.m. The video uploads, and it's called Dungeon Boys. Uh, it's me and my two brothers and one of my very close friends. Uh, we are doing a campaign through a world that I've created and a world and a story that's an original story. Um, we, of course, use all the D&D the &D monsters and the D&D &D rules and everything, but just the, the setting is mine. Um, and we're having a lot of fun. <clears throat> Last time we played, uh, we had a casino scene and a boxing match and all kind of cool stuff. So uh, if you like this, you may like that, so go try that out. Uh, but please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and do, again, let me know if you want me to keep going with these. And I will see you next time. I love you very much. Bye-bye.